Good morning. Good morning. Let's please bow our heads and close our eyes for our prayer. Our dear God, thank you for allowing us to live to see another day. May you continue to bless us and so we may go forward to spread your word. Amen. So everyone, we are going to lead out in our opening song, Shout to the Lord, which is a very well-known worship song. So we invite you to lift your voices and sing with us.
out to the Lord all the earth. Let us sing power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the works of your hands forever. Situated on the southern third of Africa is the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The division territory stretches from Zambia to South Africa and Angola to Mozambique and includes island nations such as Madagascar and Mauritius. Today, some 151 million people live in this division. More than 2.2 million are Seventh-day Adventist. That's a ratio of about one Adventist for every 68 people. Scottish missionary David Livingstone arrived in the southern part of Africa in 1841. Sent by the Protestant London Missionary Society, he carried the Christian message into the interior of southern Africa. At age 27, Livingstone had no idea the impact he would have on the region. More than 30 years later, Livingstone would die in Africa found kneeling by his bed in prayer. Some 20 years after Livingstone's death, Adventist missionaries would arrive in Southern Africa. In 1895, W.H. Anderson, his wife Nora, and two other American missionaries traveled for six weeks by ox cart from South Africa to Zimbabwe. There, they established the first permanent Adventist mission station on the continent of Africa. That mission station is now the site of Seleucy University. The Andersons served for nearly 50 years in Southern Africa, eventually establishing mission stations in Zambia and Angola as well. 
The legacy of faith and courage left by Christian missionaries like Livingstone and the Andersons lives on in the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division. For years, many of the countries have been devastated by war, civil unrest, and widespread poverty. Yet despite the physical hardships, God has blessed His work here. Adventist Church membership has grown. However, there are still challenges. There are few Adventist schools, and many of the existing schools were destroyed by war, making it difficult for Adventists to get an education. Adding to the problem, there aren't enough trained Adventist teachers, so Adventist schools have had to hire non-Adventist teachers. Let's try that again. Good morning, church. Welcome to our 13th Sabbath program with the theme, My, My Jesus, Jesus and I. I. This quarter, there are six 13th Sabbath projects in three countries, Angola, Malawi, and the Indian Ocean Island nation of Nyok. This 13th Sabbath offering quarter will help the will help the Southern African Indian Ocean Division to establish a church and elementary school in Angola, a men's dormitory at the Adventist University of Angola, a domestic violence and counseling center in Angola, an elementary school in Angola, a community outreach and leadership development center at the campus of the universe, Adventist University in Malawi, a better living center, and FM radio station in Mayor. Jada, when you hear the words, my Jesus and I, what comes to your mind? I think of my personal experience with God. And Kiana, you know I love music. So I may sing about my feelings, about my experience, and about what Jesus has done for me. Do any of you have any feel-good songs? You know, the ones that lift your spirits, put a smile on your face, or a bounce in your step? The one that just makes you feel like you just have to move and just praise God? I have heard of times gone by, especially on the bus drive to a church crusade or picnic. One person would start a chorus, and then another person would start a song in the same melody. Then, it, then another song and another song. And all of a sudden, everyone would know it's finished. Not just when you reach the destination, but when someone would start to sing. Amen. 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 Church. Amen. 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 Even though things and people may change, my Jesus does not change. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever. That's what I love about my Jesus. My Jesus and I. He really is so good to me. Let's all join and sing that chorus. God is so good. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. Did you know that Portuguese is the official language of Angola? Angola, Angola was one of the featured countries for this quarter's Adventist mission. On the screen, you can see the English and the Portuguese version with the pronunciation. Let's all try the Portuguese version. Everyone, repeat and sing after me. Deus et abom. Deus et abom. Deus et abom, Deus et abom, Deus et abom, Prami. Now 
everyone sitting on my side at church, we will sing the Portuguese version. And everyone sitting at my side of, at church, we will sing the English version. Those online, you can choose whichever version you will join in and sing. Let's lift, lift our voices and sing, sing together. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He is so good for me. Let's try again. Deus et sabon, Deus et sabon, Deus et sabon, Deus et sabon, me. May our lives truly be a reflection of his goodness, no matter where we go. Happy Sabbath and may God bless you. It may not crack the top 10 on many tourist bucket lists, but Luanda is a seriously underrated African city. One of the most vibrant, culturally rich, and trendier cities in Africa, Luanda is a breathtaking metropolis built along the Atlantic Ocean. It's also the largest coastal city in Africa and Angola's major economic hub. And when it comes to food, history, and culture, it has few rivals in Africa. Welcome to Kids Adventures in Africa. If you're a fan of our videos, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Angola was named after the rulers of an ancient kingdom called the Kingdom of Ndongo. It ruled over large parts of Angola from the 14th to the 17th century. Their kings were called Ngola, and if you put an A before Angola, it becomes Angola. Their kings were mighty warriors, and so were their queens. Have you ever heard of Queen Zinga? She's pretty famous. She was the queen of the Ndongo Kingdom in the beginning of the 17th century and she celebrated all over the world for her military prowess. For 40 years, she fought and defeated Portuguese invaders and slave traders. Unfortunately, the famous warrior queen could not live forever, so Portugal eventually colonized Angola, and its influence is still felt today, especially in the language and culture. Portuguese is the most widely spoken language in Angola, with a population of just under 32 million that makes Angola the second largest Portuguese-speaking country in the world after Brazil. As former Portuguese colonies, Angola and Brazil share many cultural ties, which we'll talk about in a minute. Angola is located on the western coast of southern Africa. It's a tropical country which enjoys great weather, and because of its location, it experiences an incredible variety of climate and wildlife. It's bordered by the Atlantic Ocean on the west, where you'll find lots of beautiful islands and beaches and sea monsters. Well, fossils of sea monsters. In recent years, Angola's coast has been the center of major scientific discovery. Paleontologists discovered fossils of sea dinosaurs, or mosasaurs, and you can see some of these at the Museum of Natural History in Luanda. There's also lots of oil along the coast. Did you know that you can buy some of the cheapest fuel in the world in Angola? The fuel here is the cheapest in Africa and fourth in the world. Angola's economy depends heavily on oil. Most of the oil comes from Cabinda, a northern province located inside the DRC. Cabinda is home to the Mayom rainforest, and this forest is no ordinary forest. It forms part of the Congo rainforest, which is the second largest rainforest in the world. Rare animals live here like the red crested turaco and the colobus monkey. And then there's a hot desert in the south towards Namibia. It's home to the oldest plant in the world, the Wawishia plant that can live up to 5,000 years. The rest of the country is a mix of urban and rural areas with stretches of farmland. Many Angolans are farmers and they produce some of the best coffee, pineapples and bananas in the world. Speaking about food, Angolans love fish. This is mufet. It's a grilled fish served with cassava and sweet potato. Even though they love fish, chicken is everyone's favorite. In particular, the Mwamba chicken. It's a chicken stew which many consider the national dish of Angola. While we're on the subject of national symbols, here's an art piece that you'll find in almost every marketplace in Angola. It's called the Thinker. 
It's an ode to Angola's rich art heritage. When it comes to music and dance, no one does it like the Angolans. Their style and rhythm is known all over the world. Today's mission story is entitled Seeing Jesus. When Ricardo was 10, he had an accident while jumping over a fence in Angola. He didn't notice a thin metal wire on the other side of the fence. It caused him to hit the ground head first. After the accident, he began to lose his sight. At school, he had trouble seeing with the teacher. He had trouble seeing what the teacher wrote on the chalkboard and he asked to sit in the front row. After a while, he could not see from the front row. Finally, the teacher sent him home, saying the school could not teach a blind boy. Ricardo's parents took him to many doctors, but none could help him. They said he would never see again. Ricardo was very sad. He could no longer play soccer, ride a bicycle, or play hide and seek with his friends. When he left home, he could hear his old playmates making fun of him. Little blind boy, little blind boy, they said. The boys and girls thought they were making a funny joke. They didn't know that their words were hurting Ricardo. He felt like life was hopeless. One day, an older cousin visited, invited Ricardo to go on a Pathfinder outing. The cousin was the leader of a Pathfinder club. Ricardo didn't want to go, but his cousin kept insisting. So finally, he went. Ricardo was surprised that he could participate in many Pathfinder activities. The cousin even asked him to help out. Ricardo felt needed. He felt good. A short time later, Ricardo heard a sermon that made him want to give his heart to Jesus. But then trouble struck. At the baptismal class, the teacher asked Ricardo and the other people who wanted to be baptized to memorize the Ten Commandments. But Ricardo couldn't read the Bible or the piece of paper with the Ten Commandments that the teacher passed out. He sadly thought he would not be able to get baptized. At home, Mother encouraged him. God willing, you will be baptized, she said. During the week, his older sister read the Ten Commandments out loud to Ricardo. She read them again and again so the boy could memorize them. On Friday, everyone who wanted to be baptized gathered at the church. Who will be the first to recite the Ten Commandments, a church elder asked. No one volunteered, so Ricardo raised his hand. He couldn't remember the correct order, but he recited all ten perfectly. The elder was amazed and shook his hand. Turning to the others, he asked, Who will recite like Ricardo? The next day, on Sabbath, everyone, including Ricardo, was baptized. Shortly afterward, Ricardo was invited to share the weekly mission story in Sabbath school. When some church members heard, they asked the, church, they asked the Sabbath school leader to change his mind. Ricardo can't tell the mission story because he can't read, they said. The Sabbath school leader gently touched Ricardo on the shoulder. Do you hear what they are saying? He asked. Ricardo nodded. Show everyone what you are able to do, he said. Prepare to tell the story next Sabbath. Ricardo's sister read the mission story to him from the mission quarterly, and he easily memorized it. On Sabbath, Ricardo told the story from beginning to end. When he finished, loud and astonished amens filled the church. Today, Ricardo is 25 years old, is a 25 year old student, and is preparing to become a pastor. He has led a Pathfinder club for the past two years, and he preaches regularly in churches around Angola. Dozens of people have been baptized after his sermons. Ricardo is no longer sad. Although he cannot see with his eyes, he knows that God has given him an excellent memory. He also says doctors were wrong when they said he would never see again. For, Re for Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 says, Behold, he is coming with clothes, and every eye will see him. New King James Version. 
This is a promise that when Jesus returns, every eye will see him, including Ricardo. One day, I will see the face of Jesus, he says. Today's 13th Sabbath offering will help open an Adventist school in Ricardo's hometown in Luanda, Angola. Thank you for giving generously to the Southern African Indian Ocean Division, which includes Angola, Malawi, and Mayala. Thank you. Henri for that very well read mission story. Uh, thanks to Jada and Kiana. Thank you very much, Brother Henri, for reading the mission story to us. We all can learn from that in terms of being able, we have our sight, so there's nothing stopping us from memorizing and reading and studying our lesson and our word. And thanks to Kiana and Jada, and even Jaden, who did very well our opening remarks. At this time, those of you at the church, I invite you to come and bring forward your 13th Sabbath offering and place in the baskets to the front um, while the next video is played, after which we will separate the children who are here. We will go over to the annex, and we will have our lesson study. And those remaining at church and those online, I invite you to pay attention to the adult lesson recap. So let's bow our heads for a word of prayer while I pray for the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be able to live to see another day and to see another end of your quarter. Continue to help the mission offering collected that it would indeed go to continue to spread your word as we see and hear of all the wonderful works that are being completed in the divisions in your name. Continue to bless us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Happy Sabbath all. All right. It's, it's always a blessing to be in the house of God and fellowshipping together. And ensure that we were blessed this mo- so far this morning. I know we will continue to be blessed as you worship in the house of God. Amen. Now, before we begin the lesson, um, I'm asking the church to pray for um, Brother Dottin and his family and Sister Marie. I ask you all to pray for them and also for Pastor Grant because he's having, having some challenges with, um, he's under a little bit of stress with his work and stuff. So he asked that the, the church to, to pray for him and remember in, him in our prayers because God called us to pray for each other. All right. Now we are come, we have come to the end of a very Oh, let us walk, um, pray for the, the, the offerings and as they begin. Our loving Father who are in heaven, we give you thanks for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy towards us. Lord, thank you for giving us the opportunity to return these gifts to go to your mission field. And as they go, may they do the work that they ought to do in bringing men and women, boys and girls, to the knowledge of thee. Lord, invite your Holy Spirit now among us. As we review your word, and may the Holy Spirit touch us and bless us as we review and as we share. I ask it in your son's precious name. Amen. All right. We have come at the end of a very interesting lesson. Um, a lot of the teens wouldn't have been new for us. I'm sure that as we have studied this quarter, we will have gain some different insights and some different understandings of um, coming down through Genesis, the different things that would have happened. And I'm sure um, you could testify that you have something that you would have learned that you wouldn't have understood before. And that's how the word of God is, because we may read something, and then we go over again, and then we see something that we haven't seen before, and we be like, whoa, God is so good. And his word is precious. Israel in Egypt. Israel in Egypt. So the lesson before dealt with the renewing of the brothers. The brothers came down. And we know that what happened in, in that um, scenario. There was a lot of forgiveness and coming back together. And then there was no, um, we saw Joseph testing his brothers to see what character they had. If they were the same and he realized that their character had changed, and then he revealed himself to them, and there was embrace and, you know, reunion to see that their brother was alive and such like. So now, Israel in Egypt, 
And Mary verse says, So Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen, and they had possession. They uh, there and grew and multiplied exceedingly. So Israel dwelt in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen, and they had possessions, and they grew and multiplied exceedingly. Now, Genesis covers the last years of Jacob and Joseph together. We see Jacob, Israel, leave Canaan, Genesis 46, in order to settle in Egypt. And there he will die. And yet, even the Egyptian setting, the prospect of the promised land still occurs large in the background. Loom, sorry, large in the background. Soon as Jacob arrived in Egypt, Jacob blesses Pharaoh, thus fulfilling partially, of course, the Aaronic promise to be a blessing to all nations. Later, about to die, Jacob blessed Joseph's son. Jacob also blessed his own son and makes impressive predictions. And we see all of this coming out in the lesson. Concerning each of them in the context of the future 12 tribes of Israel. And it goes on to say, in fact, however, that Israel dwelt in exile in Egypt as strangers is in tensions with the hope of promised land. And though the book of Genesis itself end in the children of Israel in Egypt, some of the last words of Joseph point to another place. I am dying, but God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land to the land which he swore unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. All right, so we see um, Jacob now is looking to go down to Egypt. And in this part of the lesson, and what I found interesting is, is that his, he took his directions from God. Because although, looking at the lesson, they, he, was, he had a vision, and God gave him the instructions that he can go down to Egypt. Any thoughts on this, anyone? No thoughts? Now when Jesus, Jacob leaves his place in Canaan, he is full of hope. Now we see that he's left in Canaan, and we understand the reason why he's going down to Egypt, because of the famine. And the thing is, is that when he's going down, it says, and the assurance that he will no longer be hungry, and the good news that Joseph Elias might have given him the momentum he needed to, to leave the promised land. Jacob departed, echoes the experience of Abraham. True, in Abraham's case, he was headed to the promised land. Jacob heard the same promise Abraham heard from God, namely that he will make him a great nation. So, although Jacob is going down to Egypt, the promise is still there that he will be a great nation. And this was echoed with Abraham. And you see some similarities um, here as well. Now, the comprehensive list of the names, and then you have the names of all the, the children and all the, the grandchildren and such like, as they gather to go down to Egypt. Now, the thing is, is that looking at the lesson, the gospel was made, when you go down to the end, the gospel was made for both the Jews and the Greeks, both for God's people and anyone who will accept the message. So we see here now, um, Jacob is going down to Egypt, and he took, he took his direction from God. Now it's also interesting too that when they arrive, and as we look at the lesson, called I'm summarizing, as we look at the lesson, um, you see Jacob blessing 
Pharaoh. And there's some great significance to this. Because here you have Pharaoh, the king of a great nation. And here you have Jacob coming down and also blessing him. And remember, the promise was that he would be a blessing to all nations. And in part, this was fulfilling, a fulfillment of that. And the thing is, too, that in the lesson, um, when he came down, or when the whole uh, Israel came down, they dwelt in a part of, of Egypt that was blessed. They would dwell in a part, of, in Goshen, I think it was, it was a part of Egypt which, which was blessed, and they were well taken care of. And also going through the lesson, um, you saw that with the famine, you saw that as the individuals who came, especially the Egyptians, the individuals who came for uh, grain, you find the money failed. So then they came back the next year, and it was like, we have no money. So then Joseph was saying, well, um, your lands and such like, and they sold it, and then they come back again, we don't have, and the people will say, let us be slaves. So here you see in the lesson that um, Egypt and Pharaoh are owning everything because of this famine, and they, the individuals were basically hungry and wanting to survive. And they were selling everything, and the last thing they sell was, the, sell was their sales over to Pharaoh. And the thing is that he owned everything except there was a portion because the, the priests of Pharaoh, they had a portion from the, from the Pharaoh, so they, um, they, had, they, they, had, they, they were taken care of. So we see in that same instance, Jacob coming down, and all of his people and they are being taken care of in Egypt. And the interesting thing is, is that Pharaoh, looking at the lesson, Pharaoh had favor to Joseph and Jacob because it was because of his vision that um, Egypt was saved. It was because of that, and it was because of the instructions, and we see the... the, the um, we could see the how Pharaoh favored him. You know, he became the, the, the president, so to speak, or the prime minister. Adrian, want to make a point? Mm-hmm. All right, a question out to the floor. What is a blessing? Interesting question. A well intention endorsement. Anyone else? Mm-hmm. 
by the Gearford and then Arnold. All right, hold, hold a minute. Um, there's, there's a lot of information that's being, being said, and we would like everybody else on Zoom to, to, to be, um, to be, to, okay. Okay, all right. All right, let me go. I will recap what you say so the ones on Zoom can hear. Apologize to the ones on Zoom. Who, um, Brother Patrick, wanted to say something? Question asks, only God can bless us. The the resounding answer to you is ultimately ultimately yes. One one at a time, one at a time, please. Okay, good. So the the all right, good answer. So Joseph, Pharaoh was blessed by Joseph because Joseph was blessed by God. So ultimately, all blessings come from God. Because if you look at it, if a person don't serve God, because the Bible says, let the rain fall on the just and the unjust. Yeah. So if a person does not acknowledge God as their Savior, and they plant beans, and I acknowledge God as my Savior, and they plant beans, when the rains come, they fall on his beans and my beans. So he get a harvest, and they get a harvest. Pardon me? No, if I'm God. Interesting. <laughs> probably, probably interesting. But the thing is, is that when you look at life, look at life. Because. Correct. So what, what I'm saying is, what, what, I use that analogy as a say, when the rainfall, the rainfall on both, both sets of beings, that's all. That's all I was using, right? The, the rainfall on both. So God loves all and he bless all. But the thing is that sometimes our relationship with God inspires us to bless others. Sometimes our relationship with God inspires other, inspire us to bless others. In that case, Others are recipients, recipients of God's blessings because of the connection that we have with him. All right. 
A couple more points, and then they're going to wrap up. Okay. 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 Yeah. All right, so we see a lot of blessing, blessings happening. We also see that um, in all of this, after Jacob had, Israel had blessed his people, then, and he blessed Joseph and Joseph's children, and he gave the record of his children and the characters that they have he gave up the ghost and he wanted to be buried where Abraham and Isaac and those was. And we see in the lesson a procession leaving Egypt and going to bury um, Jacob. And the lesson points out that this is a precursor for what will come many years later where there will be a procession leaving Egypt and they will be going to the promised land. And the interesting thing is about this scenario is that, and what strikes me is that Egyptians were in that procession and in those who left Egypt at the time when God visited Egypt, when he sent Moses, Egyptians also left in that procession as well they also leave so it, it, it truly to me sure that this was a precursor to what would happen later and brothers and sisters it's a blessing to study god's word and i will encourage us i will continue to encourage us to study but not only to be hearers of this word but to be doers so may god richly bless us as we continue to worship at his feet.
Welcome to the beautiful nation of Sao Tome and Principe. Located off the coast of West Africa, the people here are friendly and kind. Among the 200,000 people of this country, there are approximately 8,000 Seventh-day Adventists who worship in nearly 70 congregations. The Adventists in this region are working strategically to grow the church. Members participate in church growth initiatives and starting new groups of believers. Meet Inacio, a taxi driver on the island of Sao Tome. When Inacio doesn't have passengers, he parks his yellow taxi at Giovanni Avenue, where he has made many new friends. He connects with other taxi drivers and store employees, like the barbers in this barber shop. Every week, Anasio studies the Bible with his barber friends. They ask many questions and are happy to receive a friendly visit where they can learn about God. But Anasio's new friends had a complaint. They complained to me that they needed a Bible to follow the studies. So I talked with Pastor Ilisu and asked him for Bibles. He gave me five books. You see, these are study Bibles. In the back there are several lessons we use. This contribution enhanced our Bible studies here at the Central Square. This is Inacio's daily routine. As he travels around town, he engages everyone he meets in biblical discussion. Sometimes the studies even happen inside his cab. Other times, he comes across people who don't agree with the message, but he lovingly points them back to the Bible. He believes the Word of God can bring clarity to any issue. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. There is no gain if you are in a place with people and you know God's Word, but you won't share the gospel. I saw many people going down to the baptismal waters with gratitude for someone like me who remembered to tell them the good news. My mission is not to convert the people. It is to do God's work and allow the Holy Spirit to do His part. Local leaders are now praying for the means to construct new churches. There are dozens of congregations on the island, but many meet in rented spaces, crowded basements, and rundown structures. This quarter, a portion of your 13th Sabbath offering will sponsor construction of a new church in Sao Tome and Principe. It will also provide Bibles in Portuguese for the local children. Please pray for the 13th Sabbath offering projects to continue to expand the Adventist church in Sao Tome and Principe, as well as in Mozambique. Be kind to one another. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us do good to all people. God is not far from any one of us. Acts 17.27 Carry each other burdens, and you will fill the law of grace. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 Then God blessed the Son of the and made it holy. Genesis chapter 2 verse 3 The four key watch because you do not know the day or the hour. Matthew 25 13. This son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Luke 15 24. Oh God, it's an awesome God who works from heaven above his wisdom, power and love, oh God, it's an awesome God, oh God, it's an awesome God who works from heaven and hearts above, power and love, oh God, it's an awesome God, oh God, it's an awesome God. Above us with him, power and love of our God is us and God.
My God, he sent his angels to shut the lion's mouth. Daniel 6.22 This is my son, where whom I well please. Matthew 3, 17 Again, everyone. I just want to thank all the children, all the parents who assisted and provided the videos and those who came here today at the church to do their part for this quarter 13th Sabbath. And before we hand over to Sister Norma World for the 10 minute feature, um, we'd just like to wish Sister Okay. <laughs> so we'd like to wish Sister Lika a very belated happy birthday. Looking lovely as usual this morning. We have a basket to present to you. And on behalf of all of us, let us lift our voices and join and sing happy birthday to Sister Lee Cop. On the count of three, two, three. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. Every day of the year, may you find Jesus there. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. The that you ever have. Wishing you all of God's blessings as you continue to celebrate your birthday. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Our Sabbath school now stands adjourned. Until next Sabbath.
Good morning. Um, let's turn to the hymn number 400 and, uh, 422. 422. It says we are marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. Can we that love? Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord. And thus surround the throne. And thus surround the throne. Oh, we are marching to Zion. Oh, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to heavenly Zion, that beautiful city of God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God. But children of the heavenly king, but children of the heavenly king may speak of their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. Oh, we're marching to Zion. Oh, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching. Chain the word to heavenly Zion, that beautiful city of God. Verse 4. Then let our songs of bomb and every tear be dry. Oh, we're marching through the mind, ground. We're marching through the mind, ground to fair. Our words on high, to fair, our words on high. For we are marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We are marching the word to heavenly Zion, that beautiful safety of God. Sister Lico, I you on Sunday? Not close to your day. <laughs> and um, we're going to give you an opportunity um, to, to tell us what is a, a favorite hymn of yours. And we will just send maybe a verse or so of that, of that hymn. Mm -hmm. oh, well, one of them. What a friend we have in Jesus. Let me see if we can find 499. Number, number 400, and I understand it's number 400. Yeah, number 490. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry, oh, everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often for our faith. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Verse 3. 
Ah, we, we can have the lamb done. Oh, can bear with a load of care. Oh, precious Savior, still a refuge. They have kept to the Lord in prayer. Oh, do thy friends despise, forsake, oh, dig, oh, take, keep to the Lord in prayer. In his hands he take the shield, thee. thou will find a solace there. We're going to stand now and sing our intro as the platform personnel takes their position. Our intro song. Is exalted, the king is exalted on high. I will praise him. Oh, he is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise his name. Oh, he is the Lord forever, his truth shall reign. Oh, heaven and earth, rejoice in his holy name. Oh, he is exalted, the king is exalted on high. Oh, he is exalted, the king is exalted on high. I will praise him. Oh, he is exalted forever, exalted and high. Will praise his name. Oh, he is the Lord. Forever his truth shall reign. Oh, heaven and earth rejoicing his holy name. Oh, he is exalted, the king is exalted on high. Oh, he is exalted, the king is exalted on high. Let us bow our heads for prayer. But dear Heavenly Father, we so much want to thank you for inviting us here to be with you on yet another occasion. We ask you, the Heavenly Father, to bless us, bless us tremendously. And may this sitting at your feet be a means of drawing us closer to you. This we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. Hebrews Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. I see some people looking for it. And it will read. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. In number 524, number 524. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, I prove him or and all. It is so sweet to trust. He's so sweet 
to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Oh, just to rest upon his promise. Just to know the saith the Lord. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I prove him more and no, oh Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust him more. Oh how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust his claims in blood, oh just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing claims in flood. Oh Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and oh Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh for grace to trust him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease, just from Jesus, the same limb taking life and rest and joy and peace. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I've learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, save your friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me till the end. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him, Lord, and oh, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. All of God, our Father in heaven, we are thankful for the privilege you granted us today to be in your presence, to worship, to fellowship, to sit at your feet. Oh, Father, may we see Jesus high and lifted today. May our souls be drawn to him. May our lives be transformed by the renewing of your word as we celebrate the life, the death, the resurrection, and the second coming of our Lord. We pray, Father, that our souls may be watered. Bless us and keep us, we ask, in your holy name. Amen. Be seated, please. This morning, I want to welcome you to the celebration of the Lord's life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection as we partake of the emblems that represent his spilled blood, the wine, and his broken body, the bread. May we do so, not because we are in and of ourselves worthy, but because the righteousness of Jesus has made us worthy to partake. There is none, Jesus says, there is none righteous. No, not one. Jesus says, all, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Isaiah reminds us that our righteousness are filthy rags. And so this morning we are here not because we are good, but because we serve the one who is good. Amen. Amen. And we can celebrate his grace. We can celebrate his mercies. We can celebrate his forgiveness. And we can wash, well we're not washing each other's feet, but we can wash each other's feet, understanding that it is the blood of Jesus that washes us from every stain of sin. This morning, the message is captioned, a portrait of the blood. 
or a picture of the blood. From biology, we learn that without blood, there is no physical life. Amen? Blood flows through the human body and through everything else. Just as blood flows through our physical body to give us life, the same is true of the spiritual life. Blood flows through the Bible just as blood flows through our veins. The blood of Christ keeps Christianity alive, just as our blood keeps us alive. In fact, one theologian says, if you cut the Bible anywhere, you'll find blood. In fact, blood is spoken of in the Bible 427 times. How many times? That's plenty blood. Without blood, the gospel of Jesus Christ is dead and we are yet in our sins. Jesus said in Matthew 26 verse 28, I'm going to go through the passages kind of quickly. In Matthew chapter 26 verse 28, Jesus says, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, and in the, in the King James Bible, many means all. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for all, for the remission or the taking away. Remission means the canceling, the wiping out of sins. Paul adds in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, and almost all things are by the law, according to the law, purged or cleansed with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or canceling or erasing or taking away of sin. Paul also explains to the believers in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 14, and this is what Paul says. We have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of our sins. And so according to the Bible writers, the only reason we can celebrate salvation, the only reason we are saved from sin, is because blood was shed. In fact, Peter, in 1 Peter Chapter 1, verse 18, this is what Peter says. We are not redeemed with silver or gold. And these items were found in the sanctuary. And the Jews boasted of the sanctuary and the importance of the sanctuary and how central the sanctuary was to the life, the Christian life, the believer's life, the religious and spiritual life of the Jews of the Old Testament. But Peter adds and he says to them, the Jewish people who were in the church, he says to them, we are not redeemed or we were not redeemed with silver or gold that you find in the sanctuary or precious stones. Remember the priest on his, on his regalia had 12 precious stones on his chest and six precious stones on either shoulder, 12 precious stones. And Peter is saying, you Jews are boasting about the sanctuary, the silver and the gold in the sanctuary, and you are boasting about the beautiful regalia of the priest. But he says, we are not redeemed with those things. Rather, we were redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. John adds to the celebration in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. Listen to what John says. He agrees with Peter and he agrees with Paul. And so he writes, The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And so when we, symbolic, when we wash our feet, it's actually a symbolic gesture. The washing of the feet with water is a symbolic gesture of what Christ has already done for the believer or what Christ wants to do in, in your life. Amen? 
I love the passage in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. Listen to what Moses writes in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11. He says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, this is a principal statement. This is a statement of, of truth. It is a statement of truth. But it is a statement that is to help us to understand a principle, a foundational principle to the kingdom of God. That the shedding of blood actually represents the giving of life. Remember when the animal was slain in, in the sanctuary, the blood had to be drained. All the blood was drained out of the animal, signifying that the, the animal's life came to an end. So it is not the literal blood of Jesus, the red platelets, that gives us, that give us eternal life. It is the life of Jesus. So just imagine Jesus was nailed to the cross, spikes in his hands and feet, and he bled, crown of thorns was placed on his head, and blood came rushing down. A spear was pushed into his side, and blood came out. But what if after all that bleeding, Jesus came down from the cross and he didn't die? Would we have been saved? Come on, talk to me. Would we have been saved? No. So it is not just the blood, literally, but the life that Jesus gave. Amen, somebody? When Jesus bled, it represents the giving of his life. He died that we may have life. And so we need to understand that it is the very life of Jesus. And that's why for the redemption of the human race, it was not Adam's blood that was shared, although he was the one who caused us to be in this situation. It wasn't Noah's blood. He was a drunk. It wasn't Abraham's blood. He was a liar. It wasn't David's blood. He had all the problems in the world. It wasn't John's blood. As nice a disciple as John was, he was a very selfish guy. He set his mother up to come to Jesus to ask for a position either on the left or the right. It wasn't Paul's blood. His intention was to wipe out the Christian church. There is only one person whose blood our life was good enough. Jesus. And so after the betrayal by Judas, Judas himself cried out and said, I have betrayed innocent blood. Paul explains, for God has made him, Jesus, to be sin or to be the sin offering for us. He who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of Christ, of God in Christ. Pilate says, I find in him no fault. Peter says, he did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. John says, in him was no sin. And Jesus himself says, which of you can convince me of any sin? Jesus was spoken of as being holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. And that's why the grape juice that we use is Unferment, uh, is unfermented or uh, without alcoholic content and the bread we use is without yeast which represents sin yeast represents sin alcohol represents corruption the fruit begins to spoil and so these two emblems represents, represent the perfect life 
death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And again, Leviticus 17 reminds us, 17.11 reminds us, that the giving of blood represents the giving of life. Today, we celebrate the life, the death, the resurrection, and the second coming of a perfect redeemer, the perfect savior. May we celebrate him, not just the past, but may we celebrate the soon coming of Jesus. Jesus says, I will not drink of the vine from henceforth until I do it with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen? And so as we celebrate the Lord's Supper, may we do so exercising faith that soon and very soon we shall see the King. May God truly bless us this morning as we give ourselves to God and as we celebrate Jesus. God bless you in a mighty way. morning service. I invite you now to stand as we sing the hymn number 412. I also invite you during the singing of, of this hymn, um, you can come forward and, and bring your, your gifts, your tithes, and, and your offerings and gifts to the friend. Number 412, 412. Please. Look upon Jesus, sing less he see, sad and impute his life unto me. Oh, my life of scarlet, oh, my sin of woe, covered with his life. Whiter than snow, oh, covered with his life, so whiter than snow. Firmness of his light, then shall I know my life of scarlet, oh, my sin of woe, covered with his life, whiter than snow. Deep are the wounds, transgression has made. Oh, red are the stains, my soul is afraid. Hope oh, to be covered, oh, Jesus with thee. Safe from the Lord that now judges me. Oh, covered with his life. A oh, white turn and snow, fullness of his life, then shall I know my life of scarlet, oh, my sin and woe, covered with his life, white turn and snow, longing the joy of Pardon to you know, Jesus, O Thou, of row wipe as snow. Lord, I accept it, or leave it my own. Gladly I will thy pure life alone. Cover with his life, wipe dirt and snow. Firmness of his life, then shall I know, oh, my life of scarlet, oh, my sin of woe, covered with his life, whiter than snow. Reconciled by his death for my sin, justified by his life pure and clean.
sanctified by hope, obeying his word, glorified when he returneth my Lord. Oh, covered with his life, oh, wiped her than snow, <clears throat> fullness of his life, oh, then shall I know, oh, my life of scarlet, oh, my sin and woe, covered with his life, whiter than snow, oh, covered with his life, Wiper than snow, fullness of his life, then shall I know my life of scarlet, my sin and woe, covered with his life, wiper than snow. <laughs> This morning, it's my privilege to welcome us to the second section, second part of the celebration, where we partake, please be seated, where we partake of the, the bread and the wine, of course, the emblems of the broken body and the spilled blood of Jesus Christ. Paul encourages us to, to take to partake worthily and of course we understand that worthily indicates not about who we are but of the one that we are celebrating Jesus is the one who is worthy and if we understand what Jesus has done for us by faith in him we can partake of this many people figure if I've committed a sin during the week I am not worthy that means none of us is worthy Sorry, that means I'm not worthy, you are. We have all fallen short of the glory of God, saints. And we need to understand that Jesus is our righteousness. And the celebration here is a celebration of Jesus' righteousness, not of how good we are, because none of us is good enough. Amen? We need to understand this. And so the worthiness that Paul is speaking of is an understanding of Jesus, the one who makes us worthy, the one who makes us righteous. So every one of us here this morning is here because we are in need of Jesus' righteousness. That's why we came. Because we are unworthy, we are here. Because we have sinned, we are here. Because we have messed up, we are here. And because we are in need of the righteousness of Jesus, we are here. So let's celebrate this morning with that understanding that Jesus is all the world to me. Do you know that song? Do you know that song? What number is that? What number is that? Number one? Find it. Let's sing the first stanza of that song. Because it helps us to understand what this service is all about. Amen? Find a number and, and somebody give me give me the, 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 the book. I, I want to lead it out. I want to lead it out myself, Adrian. One hundred and eighty-five. Find it there for me, Adrian. We're gonna sing the first stanza. One eighty-five. By the way, this is not part of the this is not part of the plan. Jesus is all the world to me, my life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him I would, well, I am sad when, when I am sad to him. No other one, no other one can share. When I'm sad, when I am sad, he makes me glad. 
is my friend. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So, welcome and may God's blessings be upon us. Luke chapter 22, verse 19 reads, And he took bread and gave thanks, and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us bow our heads for prayer as we pray for the bread. Our loving Father who are in heaven, Lord, we thank you for giving us opportunity where we can come here on this Holy Sabbath day to celebrate communion. Lord, I ask you that you would be with each head bowed here. Lord, be with this bread. And as we partake, may it be a blessing to us. And may we look to Calvary Cross where you have died for us. And may we also look for you coming as our Lord and Savior in the sky. So bless this bread, I ask, in your son's precious name. Amen. While the bread is being prepared, we will turn to the hymn number 163. Number 163. Alas, send in my Savior, bless him, did my sovereign die? O oh, world, he devoured that sacred hate to our someone such as I. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. Oh, it was there by faith I received my sight, and now I'm, I'm happy all the day. Oh, was it for Christ that I have done? He suffered on that tree. Oh, amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond degree. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away for oh, it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy of the day but dross of grief of can never repay the days of love I owe. Oh, here, Lord, I give myself away. Peace, all that I can do. Oh, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away. Though he was there by faith, I received my sight. And now I am happy all the day. Number 271. Number 271. Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. As thou dost break the loaves beside the sea. 
me on the sacred page. I see the Lord, oh my spirit points to the living word. Bless thou the truth, dear Lord, to me, to me. As thou dost bless the bread by Calvary, oh, then shall all bondage cease, all fetters fall, and I shall find my peace, my all in all. Did we miss anyone? Has all been served? Praise God. It was the feast of Pentecost, during which time the children of Israel were instructed by God to make two barley loaves as a celebration of the harvest, as they celebrated Pentecost. Jesus walked through Jerusalem during the time when loaves, two loaves of bread were used for celebration and he declared before Jerusalem and before the world, I am the bread of life. This morning you hold in your hand the emblem that represents Jesus, his broken body, the bread of life who supplies all our needs and saves us from sin. With a prayer of thanksgiving through faith, Eat ye all of it. Make sure you take it out of the plastic bag first. Verses 17 and 18 reads, And he took the cup and gave thanks, and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Our loving God, our Redeemer, our Savior, we celebrate the life that you gave for mankind. Your blood was shed on Calvary's cross that we may have cleansing from sin, redemption, and reconciliation to our Heavenly Father. Father, through Jesus, we thank you. We honor you. We praise you. We magnify your holy name. And as we celebrate the Lord's Supper today, we pray truly that our lives may be regenerated, that we will experience a fullness of your presence and a washing away of our sins. We thank you in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. In the blood from the cross, I will be washed from sin. Hope up to be 
free from drought, still I will enter in. Come on, sing this song. Oh, deeper yet, deeper yet, into the crimson flood. Oh, deeper yet, oh, deeper yet, under the precious blood. Day by day, oh, Blessings are sent to me, oh, but for more, oh, of his form, ever my prayer shall be. Come on, sing. Oh, deeper yet, sing deeper yet, into the crimson flood. Oh, deeper yet, deeper yet, under the precious Near to Christ, I would live, following him each day. Oh, what I ask, he will give. So then with faith I pray. Sing deeper yet, deeper yet, into the crimson flood. Deeper yet, deeper yet. Under the precious blood, now I have a oh, peace, sweet peace, while in this world of sin. Oh, but to pray, I'll not cease till I am pure within. Oh, deeper yet, deeper yet, into the crimson flood. the precious blood. Number 184. Number 184. Say, I strain when the smoke shall of witness wash and pray, finding me night all in all. Say, oh, Jesus, made it all, all to him I owe. Thing have left a crimson stain. He washes white as snow. Amen. Did we miss anybody? Has all been served? Praise God. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or canceling or washing away or whiting out. Back in school, we had the white out. When you use that, you know whatever is under there is gone. Jesus' blood is like white out. It covers us and blots out our sins. It cleanses us from all our mistakes, praise God. And this morning we are here to celebrate a redemption and a making of new through the blood of Jesus Christ. How unworthy we are. Yet God, in his loving kindness, looked down upon us and gave us his son. By faith and through thanksgiving, drink all of it.
At this time, we will give anyone the opportunity to give God thanks for his goodness towards you. Anyone? Amen. Amen.
give God praise and thanks. Um, I recently made my way back to a sickness. Um, recently made my way to a uh, sickness, right? And it was, it was awful. And the sad thing about it, and the beautiful the thing about it, it ain't only sickness, you know. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus said that each and every God take up the cross. We got to cut our cross daily and follow him. And I want to give God praise and thanks. Now I just do kind of farming and so forth. And I have I have a lot of cassava plant. Lord have mercy. Go and sleep one night and get up. And pastor, you go tell me what happened? All the cassava bliss. Bless her up. All the cassava bless her. I give God praise and thanks. I say, Lord, look at my cassava. Lord. Not only sickness, you know, the physical pain too. <laughs> look at what I said. We may see last look. Yeah, I may sleep and, and, and when I get in the morning, all my cassava bless her. A guy come with the chat and spray up and he grow. We are we are and all the spray come down. But I give God praise and thank. I pray. I say, Lord, send your rain. That this will revive. And he send the rain and they revive because I'm a lot sure now. And brothers and sisters, I work now, but I go do no spirit whatsoever. No, I don't. I go and I read and I fork. And they just feel so good out there reading and fork. I do not do no spirit at all. So you want to tell your brothers and sisters, God is good. And they miss my sickness and all that kind of thing. God promised me, God promised us things in this world. But one thing he promised for sure, eternal life. So living as brothers and sisters who will only do the things that we will have eternal life. Not this temporal life. He promised eternal life. And we got to fight for that there. And allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. And be thankful in all situations. I don't know who, who went and spread things. But I ain't look for nobody. You know, I just get, I get my name. A prayer. God says, send you in. That my could have a good and so good. So you understand this evening. Give God prayers and thank for his goodness and mercies towards me. I know my person, but nevertheless, I just want to give God thanks and praise. The struggle is real, brother and sister. And we are living in a time that we are struggling, not suffering, but we are struggling. Once we are God, children, we will never suffer. And things has come in financial things, but I'm able to pay my bills. Light water still on and everything, give God praise and thanks. But... I had a machine that I have given a machine man for nearly three or four years. And every time I tell you to bring it back, you can't fix it, you find somebody at the find that at school. I asked myself if I'm getting soft because he ain't bringing it back. And that is only my means of getting money. My, my could say, you're going to come, you're going to come. So you, you know you're getting done, you need your praying. You're praying, but you ain't seeing the answer. You want the tree cut, the tree cut yet. All these things happening. But what can you do as a child of God? Continue and pray. So I say, Lord, I ain't even calling him no more. Cause every time I call him, he ain't bringing back my machine. So I didn't call him, but a day he called me. And he said to me, he coming by me. I said, thank you, Jesus. So when he came, he brought this machine. Looked like mine, but I know him mine. But he was honest enough to say, it's not your machine. When I get through your machine, I will bring back your machine. <laughs> but I don't tell myself, what he give me? My machine must get somebody else too. <laughs> but this is my machine now, because it's in charge of me now. So I thank God, because in that time, you know, the enemy like to whisper in your ears and tell you, you're praying, you're praying, and God ain't coming through. But I want you to know that when you continue to pray, God is going to come true, not in our time, but in his time. So I give God a praise and thank that you're able to, you know, do what I do. Because if you don't work, you can't eat. So I give God praise and thanks for that. Amen.
This morning, I want to give God thanks for two things. I'm very brief. I want to give God thanks that I have lived long enough again to see my two little grandchildren. And Amen. I know, <laughs> know that really and truly grandchildren turn to be rich. <laughs> But anyhow, I want to say thank God for my two grandchildren. And I also want to give God praise and thanks. During this week, three of, between last week and this week, three of our family members had surgery. And I want to thank God that they've all come through the surgery and that they are on the mend. So I want to give God thanks for that. I've been sitting down there here in Sicily Court. I come remain in my seat. I is 64. I know at work, I have some challenges because I was the oldest man for my team. And every day they come at me, I don't know how you get a job done. I said, by the help of God. The men in the 20s and in the 30s cannot do what I do. I don't know how to get it done. But Friday we had three containers to unpack. The boss said, brethren, today is party and day. If you don't get a job done, some people, somebody gets sent home. We started, we had only two, one. The last container fix, and the boys, now send me on truck now, take me off the container, say, I know, we got some deliveries, I need to go out. I said, Lord, how we get this container done? I go up on the road. By the time I go up the road, these men are stop. <laughs> I go up on the road, come back. The container near them, but not done. About a quarter more a day, and then set some pipe and straight across the road. We finish the container, the manager sends out, but don't worry, put that fall down. Let me get the container done before the director come in. We got the container done, and it is a quarter to four. Twenty, no, yeah, a quarter to four. And everybody said, I'm going to go home. I walked through the back, and I find all the pipe, a quick container just spread across the road. I said, brethren, I said, brethren, I said, men, come. I picked four men me. And go on the back. I said, see, the manager said today he would send him home every day. But see, I worse than the manager. I would talk, I would send him home. And what they were saying, the manager come, I don't say bad. I said, no, I say I worse than you. <laughs> and the manager, the manager said, I don't I said, I thank you. Because every day I come and see hey, it was my back. You see, when it's easy, I get pressure. My they what you use. My boys they began pull. But in the same, don't know here, my boys they began pull. So brethren. And you know, the man just giving praise and thanks for what I've done for him. And it only because of God's love. Because I myself would do the same thing, sit down and watch everybody doing it. But when we're serving the Lord, we can't sit down. We had to be different. We had to be different. And I thank God that I, I have been on his side. And even if I don't say a word, the man is, you see it in the action of a child of God. Stand church, as we sing to close number 341, I really also want to give God thanks for his goodness and for his mercies. I really want to thank the Lord for seeing you this morning. And I want to invite, I really want to invite our, of our members who may be on, 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 on watching us via social media and watching us via YouTube to come and be with us here at the church. We are kind of full but we still have room for you. So we invite you to come here and fellowship with us. Number 341, as we sing to close this hymn, we will collect the needy poor offering. Number 341. God be the glory, great things he have done. So love he the world that he gave us his son. Who yielded his life and atonement for sin. 
and open the life gate that all may go in. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, let the earth hear his voice. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, let the people rejoice. Oh, come up to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he have done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood. Oh, to every believer, the promise of God. Oh, the vilest offender who truly believes in that moment from Jesus, a pardon received. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, let the earth hear his voice. Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, let the people rejoice. Oh, come up to the Father, true Jesus, the Son, and give him the glory. Great things he have done. Great things, oh, he has taught us. Great things he has done. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But pure and higher and greater will be. Oh, our wonder, our transport in Jesus we see. Oh, praise the, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, true Jesus, the Son, and give him the glory. Great things he have done. And praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Oh, let the people rejoice. Oh, come oh, to the Father, true Jesus, the Son, and give him the glory. Great things he hath Done. Amen. I invite you to bow your heads as we pray. Our loving God, our Father, we thank you for the privilege that you've granted us today to fellowship together, to worship together, and to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May your Holy Spirit go before us. May your holy angels guide and protect us. And may your name be written upon our hearts. May others come to know you through our ministry to them. Guide us, bless us, keep us. May the offerings collected today be used for the furtherance of your cause. May na your name be magnified. And may sinners come to know you as Savior and Lord. This, Father, is our desire through our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray now and forevermore. Amen and amen. God's richest blessings upon your saints, and may you continue to have a fantastic Sabbath. God bless you. Thank you so much. As we leave the sanctuary, we are going to sing number 476. Number 476 as we Days are filled with sorrow and care. Oh, hearts are lonely and dread. Oh, burdens are lifted up Calvary. 
Jesus is very near. Oh, burdens are lifted up, Calvary. Oh, Calvary, Calvary. Oh, burdens are lifted up, Calvary. Oh, Jesus is very near. Oh, cast your cares on Jesus today. Leave your worry and fear. Because burdens are lifted at Calvary. Oh, Jesus is very near. Oh, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Oh, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Oh, troubled souls, the Savior can see. Oh, heavy hearted and tear. Oh, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Oh, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Oh, Calvary, Calvary. Oh, burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. 